let's get into that a little further. The states like Texas has come out and said we may not take our Medicaid allotment. It's and we're, two look, to one, we're right? looking at it here as right. well, because right? Because because the golden handcuffs, you have to do certain metrics in order to get half that right. money. Yeah. And Un- unfunded federal mandates uh, are really really impacting uh, state budgets now, and the federal government is notorious for saying, you know, we'll give you. Two dollars, but you've got to spend a dollar to get the two dollars. Now, to some people that might sound, "Oh, hey man, that's a pretty good deal." I, I spend a dollar, somebody gives me two dollars. But the reality is, uh, a lot of that does that is, money come for free? No, well, but, but, but I'm saying it's still tax dollars. Mm-hmm. Number one, number two, it, it may be asking you when you're trying to figure out what what is the absolutely core services that we need to protect, the need to have stuff. This federal match may be saying we want you to ignore that and spend this money on this nice to have stuff. Or we're going to cut your funding off. And that's where we're at. And that's where a lot of states are at. They're saying, hey, look, we need relief. We need waivers from a lot of this nice-to-have stuff that you make us spend money on in order to draw down the federal well, one of the funds. Things that came and, up on the and Medi- the federal government won't do it. So um, Texas is saying, you know what? And one of the things that came up is having needs-based. So, like, if you're uh, – you can charge a copay on your access visits, your Medicaid visits. So and there we, is some money coming out of pocket. You can't do that now? No, that they, they won't give us the waiver to do that. Mm-hmm. And and uh, I, I pushed for that last year. Access did uh, – start trying to put a co-payment in they got sued they actually won the lawsuit saying they were allowed to do that and then the federal like government like three dollars yeah well, three, well three we were going to do uh, a graduated amount it was not very mm. much though but um the federal government says no we, we you do that we're not going to give you your matching funds we don't want you to do that mm. so you know this is the problem like every time we try to do something to, to bring reform in i got a bill now that's going to fine access patients uh if they miss appointments you know that Oh, of, I do I know I'm of, in the business <laughs> of the appointments that are missed. It's sixty uh, percent of access patients do not show up for yeah. an appointment. Sixty percent. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So here's a here's and that a doctor. doctor's time. That's, That's right. right. Here's a doctor. You know, if I I have I, I go to a doctor uh, in in downtown. He's a really good a dentist and. If I miss an appointment, he bills me 25 bucks mm-hmm. for a missed appointment if I didn't call 24 hours in advance. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, oh, and you know what? I don't miss appointment, appointments very often when I got to fork over 25 bucks. We have that. a policy at our practice where we, after four misses, we just fire the patient. I mean, which you can do. It's hard to do, but you got to Four do. misses. You guys yeah. are real hard cases. Yeah. Well, well, so the bill I got, it, it's, it, it, it requires now access patients to pay the $25 fine to the physician before they're allowed to make any appointment anywhere else in the system. Oh, if, if, there's if, a good yeah, point. Yeah, if they do it the second time, it's a $100 fine, and if they fail to pay in either case, they get their access benefits stripped, and then the federal government says, nope, can't do that. We won't let you. So we have, even though we have problems, we're trying to do reforms, we're trying to bring accountability, the federal government will not let us do that. And so now the option is, okay, you know what? Screw these guys. They want to run the system. They want to tell you what you can and can't do. Fine. Do it. We'll, we'll opt out. We'll give them the Prop 204 money, which is mandated, and we'll say, hey, we'll give you this money from Prop 204, from the tobacco money, to run the program and administer. We're not doing it. You know, that, that is an option because they will not grant us any waivers to do any reforms. And, and so, you know, the governor's saying, you Talk know. Talk about setting a precedent around yeah, the country. Yeah, the governor's oh, saying, man, the governor's saying you know, if you, if you won't give us any flexibility to be able to deal with this, then we're, we're going to just dump it back in the federal government hands and they'll run it just like they run the Medicare system. Frank, we talked about unemployment benefits, okay? And as business owners, you have this problem where, of course, there's lots of fraud in unemployment yep. when you're trying to make And you have people who are really, business owners who are really trying to be good about keeping their ratings down and this stuff. But it seems like the extension of an unemployment benefits from the federal side has helped create even bigger chaos in that field. What can, what's going well, on with we've that? We've got a problem in Arizona and a bunch of other states where, where employers are now unable to find anybody because the employee comes in for a job and says, hey, I'll work for you, but I don't want to be on the payroll. I want to be paid under the table. And if you don't pay me on the table, I'm not going to work for you. So they're having a hard time finding guys to the point where many of these employers, particularly for unskilled or low-skilled labor, have no choice but to say, well, i got to have a guy. I need this job filled. I can't find a job. So I start paying this guy under the table, um, which is illegal. And the reason they're asking to pay him under the table is they don't want to leave their lose their unemployment benefits or their access benefits or their, their welfare benefits with regard to SNAP, that the, the uh, food stamp system. So, I mean, there are people... So it's like you're there. in a catch. It's a catch. You yeah, can't go yeah. beyond and you're stuck. And, so, and the, reason is, and the reason is the entitlement is too high and you could actually live i'm not saying comfortably but you can you can live much better than used to be able on welfare unemployment and all this other stuff and really you don't have to do nothing so 
one of the things we want to do is lower the levels of those benefits so that it's very it is barely surviving and that's where it needs it has got to be so uncomfortable that it is literally the safety net to keep you alive and anything other than that it, it, it doesn't do anything you can't you don't have any other disposable income so that you it makes you want to go work and right now it doesn't it actually discourages you I mean you can go what is it what is it now three and a half years yeah. on unemployment yeah. and as you, and you my, I just I got a hit I got a th- I used to pay 50 a year not per employee now I pay 350 a year so now, like well, I know. So Get your state trust you're, funds. If back you're if you're an unemployed if you're if you're an employer and you got a new employee coming in wanting to work and and you got a guy that that has been out of work for three weeks four weeks he's been working for a company and you, he's got references saying he's a good guy and then all of a sudden you got a guy that's been out of work for three years and he's got a reference from three years ago that says he was good. Now he's been out of the workplace. He's he's lost his work work ethic. He's not. You know, I'm not going to hire the guy that's been out of work three years because I'm wondering. Well, why wasn't he hired by anybody else? How come he couldn't be hired in three years? You are hurting people by keeping them on unemployment. You're increasing their unemployability. Well, and, and, and I don't believe Frank. Well, there's four businesses that I'm engaged in and running. There's probably between them all 40, maybe 110, 115 employees that I'm involved right. in. None of them have laid off under this downturn. Everybody, every one of those businesses, we've worked hard to keep it all rolling. Right. And we're struggling like crazy on the back end from the owner side. And then I get the state fund, uh, right. unemployment trust fund comes to me and says, you got to kick in six times what you just yeah, spent Yeah, because the, the federal government extends. How is that right? Be, well, it's not because the federal government extends that and there is a state match that's required. Uh, and so in order to meet those extended obligations, the state has to increase the amount of money that goes into the unemployment. So I go uh, through the brain damage to keep right. it all together for the last two years. And you get and make sure all my employees are set and right. been paid. Our, our our system, pay into the system. our system encourages <clears throat> stupidity and punishes common sense. I mean that it is back ass words. You got people going out there and saying, "Hey, I, I want to work hard. I want to pay my bills. I want to raise my kids the right way. I'm going to work." You know, and what do we do? We tax the living daylights out of them, penalize them. And then you got people say, "I'm going to do drugs. I'm going to drop out of school. I'm going to have kids out of wedlock. I'm going to live on welfare." And we reward them. We give them more money. I didn't hear this story. I didn't hear it in the news or anything like that until my buddy Mike. Uh, he owns the best. He's the best tile floor guy in town. Okay, he is the best up in Oro Valley. Twenty biz- years in business, and he goes, "Dude." I'm getting my statements from unemployment, and my rating, which was imperfect for the right. last 20 years, is in that crapper now mm. because of things that we're talking about here, yeah. and i got to pay this and blah, yeah. blah, blah. So uh, Atlas Shrugged, if you haven't read it, there comes a point when everybody like a Joe and like your tile guy goes, why am I doing this again? What's yeah. the point? Right. Really, what's right. the point? Because I'm working my tail off. I get the, you know, I work 30 days. I get two days worth to of help, revenue to, to help take home. And give, give money to people that don't have the same well, work ethic. That gets yeah. to the point where you're We're going to have to rapid fire some calls and get Frank to work. So let's let's roll it through. Let's start with Bill, Bobby, and Kevin. And then Marsha Petrie, Sue's online. We'll get to her right after the break. Billy, what's going on? Real quick, my friend. 